nice article in the Managing Madrid uh, blog. Uh, wonderful lads that do a great job there. And it's worth reading about that man there. So he bets the man needs to rest and the numbers reveal why. Times ended up almost looking like a 6 3 1. Some very good writing about that on the Managing Madrid website. Such a great podcast as well. Pere Valverde was a huge part of the equation. Hello, Madridistas. This is Kian Sobani. What you're about to hear is an excerpt from my upcoming book, The Holy Book of Madridismo. Obviously, Gonzalo Higuain retired yesterday, and I really wanted to get something out on him, something in written form where I could verbalize my thoughts, just kind of sit there with some headphones, cup of coffee, and just plow through and let me kind of resurface some of those Higuain memories and do a deep dive on him. It just wasn't possible. We were doing podcasts all day. Some of them haven't been released yet, and uh, we have just a jam-packed schedule of podcasts this whole week, and we also have columns we need to drop. We have to cover the news. So it's just a lot. When Gonzalo Higuain all of a sudden retires through the middle of this, it's really hard to (laughs) kind of just drop everything and, and do that. But I did want to pay tribute to him. I really liked him as a player. I thought he was underrated, again, despite him being so good. And I think he could have been even a little bit better. And I think a lot of us have a love-hate relationship with him. I don't think I speak for myself when I say this because as good as he was, there were definitely moments in the Champions League, plenty of them, where I think if he was just a little bit better or if he could have replicated his La Liga form, we would have possibly gone farther in the Champions League. But again, I want to reflect mostly on his good stuff and... um, I just I thought the best way to pay tribute to him maybe is to release a small section, pin-sized hole um, segment from my upcoming book. So here we go. Gonzalo Higuain, 2006-2013. to CV, three La Liga titles, one Copa del Rey title, two Spanish Super Cup titles, second in La Liga in scoring 2009-2010 season, Third in La Liga in goals and assists per 90 for three consecutive seasons, 2009 to 2012. First in La Liga in non-penalty goals, 2011-2012 season. Prolific and reliable wingman to Ronaldo during the Messi-Ronaldo era. His special power? He could bench a cat. Gonzalo Higuain. Supremely talented. Supremely good. Supremely frustrating. Supremely satisfying. Was a polarizing figure for Real Madrid. Many fans will remember him as a lethal assassin against most teams and a choker in big moments. I was between 18 and 25 years old during the Higuain era, long before I became a journalist, when I was an emotional fan crying, screaming, and popping blood vessels. And my experience watching him was something like this in stages. Stage 1. This guy can't score to save his life. Stage 2. This guy can't stop scoring. He is one of the best goal scorers in the world. We must protect him at all costs. Stage 3. This guy is a choker. Anyone who lived the Iguain experience during that time knows exactly what I'm talking about. Iguain needed 20 chances to score one when he first arrived from River Plate. But by his third year, he couldn't stop scoring. By year four, he outscored Cristiano Ronaldo. He is the poster boy for the importance of patience. When Vinicius Jr. was struggling to score goals early in his Real Madrid career, fans would ask us, are there any examples of players who were terrible at finishing but then figured it out? Our first example was always Higuain. Higuain scored 107 goals in 190 games in La Liga and for large stretches was preferred by Jose Mourinho over Karim Benzema. In December of 2010, Mourinho, frustrated with Benzema, who he had to play because Higuain wasn't available, publicly said, quote, If I can't hunt with a dog, I will hunt with a cat, end quote. In this case, Higuain was the dog, Benzema the cat. But while Higuain was the complete dog in La Liga, it was the Champions League where he couldn't score to save his life. He scored 8 goals in 48 appearances in Europe for the club, and his miss against Lyon in the 2010 Champions League round of 16 still haunts everyone who had to watch this horror in real time. As time passes, Higuain should be remembered for what he was, a lethal striker who lost his place for a variety of reasons, namely, the club signed Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema three years after they signed him, and... Benzema won out because, well, he was damn good and he was a Florentino Perez signing. Higuain was signed by Ramon Calderon prior. 
Iguain did have a great career after leaving Real Madrid in 2013, though, and was Serie A's top scorer in the 2015-2016 season where he scored a whopping 36 goals with Napoli. 